So thank you everyone for joining us today for our first Fellowship Fund webinar. I'm joined here with Abby Earp, our program manager for the Fellowship Fund. I'm joined here with the Center for, Center for Financial Management with Curtis, Katie, and Mariah. They'll be going over the Ag Plan and uh, helping out with the business plan part of the application. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or Q&A. We'll answer them as we go, and we'll have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. But um, it's getting, being recorded it's, again it'll be on our YouTube channel. So feel free to share it with anyone that you think would be interested as well. And yeah, anything you would like to say, Curtis, before we get started? No, just um, happy to be a part of it. All right. Thank you, Curtis. Abby, you go ahead and get started. Can you see that okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna start off with a short overview of the fellowship fund and then we'll get into the application a little bit more. Okay, so the fellowship fund was established in 2011 and has since awarded over $4.5 million in grants to nearly, nearly a thousand farmer veterans. So I think after this past year, it was actually over 1100 veterans. Um, the small grant program provides direct assistance to farmer veterans with awards of $1,000 to $5,000. The purchases are made on behalf of the farmer veteran for equipment and other related supplies that will positively impact their ag business. So um, we don't give the funds directly to the awardee. Instead, they go to their preferred vendors, they request invoices from them, and then we pay the vendor directly. That's just so then we know that the funds are going towards agriculture businesses. Um, the application does open on January 3rd and must be submitted by February 14th. And then our wonderful funders, um, a few major sponsors include Kubota, ADM, um, Tractor Supply, and Farm Credit. And then our partnership with Kubota. So, um, Kubota does the Gear to Give program. It provides equipment and grants through the Fellowship Fund. The Gear to Give application is actually integrated into the Fellowship Fund application. Um, sometimes this confuses people a little bit, but basically you go through the whole Fellowship Fund application, and at the very end, there will be a question that asks if you would like to apply for the Gear to Give program as well. You'll just check yes or no. And if you check yes, additional questions will come up that just kind of asks about um, your equipment needs and a little bit more details about that. So since 2015, the Geared to Give program has awarded 46 pieces of equipment to Farmer Veteran Coalition members. Um, this past year, they actually gave away four tractors and a piece of the hay equipment. So it varies based on what our members need. Okay, so some requirements of the fellowship fund. So, um, most importantly, you must be a veteran member of FEC. Um, if you have any trouble doing that, you can always contact us. We're happy to help. You must have served or are currently serving in any branch of the U.S. military. You must have received an honorable characterization of service upon discharge from the military. Other characterizations of service may be accepted on a case-by-case -case basis. We will just need a little bit more clarification. Um, currently serving service members must provide a letter of support from their commanding officer or designated representative attesting to their characterization of service. So um, if you do need a template of this, we have a few in the support center, just give us a call. And then you must have an agriculture business in operation and a business plan. Um, the fellowship is designed to support for-profit ag businesses Nonprofits are not eligible to apply this upcoming cycle. Previous fellowship recipients are only eligible to apply again if previously previously awarded $1,000 or less. So this is usually our tractor supply gift certificates. Um, you can apply again. Um, however, all are welcome to apply to receive equipment through Kubota's Gear to Give program. So if you were awarded uh, $5,000 last cycle, you can apply and do the fellowship on application again, and just at the end, um, put that you wanna apply for the Geared to Give program as well. Uh, of course, you must be willing to fully participate in the fellowship fund program. 
This includes progress reports, uh, mentoring, the fast, and a desire to make a positive impact on the farmer veteran community. Um, the progress reports are really important. We always do a post survey and we send those results to our funders. Um, it helps a lot, especially the pictures. So, and then the actual application. So you'll need to upload three um, documents. One will be a redacted DD-214. Um, we do not want to see your social security number, so make sure to cover all that important stuff up. And then a short essay response, which is just a page, um, one paragraph, nothing too crazy. Um, the prompt is usually about how you take and transfer your skills from the military to your life in agriculture now. Um, and then a business plan and the cycle, um, the maximum amount of pages you can do for that is 15. And then you can also save the application and come back to it later. All you have to do is just click a checkbox that's next to, we'll say, save my progress, resume later. You just click that and I'll send you an email and um, you can create a login to get into your application again. Um, I do suggest that you copy and paste all your responses to a Word document, just so then you can have those on hand in case something does happen. And then the application consists of conditional questions. Um, this means that as you fill out the application, additional questions will appear based on your responses. Sometimes this gets people, they um, look at the application, and they see there's only like five questions. They're like, oh, I'll get to that later. Um, no, it takes a little bit longer than 10 minutes. So um, it usually takes about an hour to two hours. Of course, that's if um, your business plan is about complete. So make sure to prepare for that. Okay, and then the scoring. So a lot of people um, kind of forget this, but the um, we have third party reviewers that actually review the applications. Um, they We had about 56 reviewers this last year and um, they get a rubric. Um, each application gets scored twice by two different reviewers. And then we average those scores up but there's seven categories on that rubric and the reviewer scores one through five for each category. So just make sure that you see that your application has these key points somewhere in it. So the first category is farm training slash experience. So it asks, does the candidate have the training experience necessary to succeed in their business? Some people overthink this. Um, it does not have to be, you don't have to go to college or any crazy thing like that. It could be something small as if watching a webinar, watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, anything that contributed to your farm training um, to get to you to where you are now. Um, category number two, transferable skills. So this kind of has to do with that essay that I mentioned earlier. Does the candidate possess skills from their military service and or previous careers that will be valuable to their farming venture? So this could be things such as skills and mechanics, uh, serving vehicles, construction, sales, marketing, um, leadership, anything like that. And then number three, personal investment. So has the candidate already made a significant personal investment of time and resources into their farming career? So what have you put into this so far? Um, this could be education, training, um, land, equipment, livestock, all kinds of things. Number four, so strategic request. Will the requested equipment or materials strate strategically advance the candidate's business? So we really wanna see that the requested items um, will make a long lasting impact on your operation. Number five, vision, goals for the future. A lot of these points I wanna say will probably be um, brought up in your business plan. So, and that's totally okay. Um, so does the candidate articulate how they see the fellowship fitting into their long-term business and life goals? Um, yeah, just try to be as specific as possible. We wanna see how this award or our organization can help you accomplish those goals. And then community involvement, has the candidate demonstrated previous involvement with the Farmer Veteran Coalition or veteran and or farming communities? So have you um, have you gone to a chapter meeting? 
Um, are you involved in the chapter? Um, do you mentor veterans? Um, do you volunteer at your local farmer's market? Any of that type of stuff would work. Okay, then number seven. So unique impact. Um, does the candidate combine solid qualifications with a unique perspective, experience, or a skill that would add to the fellowship community? So what makes you stand out than all the other applicants? Um, so yeah, there is a brief overview. Um, we will also be doing additional webinars and we can, um, yeah, kind of go into more detail about different segments of the application. Of course, you can always contact me. That's my, uh, our email addresses, my phone number, and then also the support center email address and phone number. And then real quick, I'd like to add on, um, on our YouTube channel, we do have another a video available that goes over to, uh, the fellowship fund and the business planning part. So you, I'll put that in the link as in the chat for the link for that, and uh, you can view that as well. But um, again, if you have questions about the um, application, we're free to put them in the chat as um, Curtis and our friends at Center for Farm Financial Management goes over the Ag Plan. So Curtis. Well, thank you, Diego and Abby. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Curtis Monken from the Center for Farm Financial Management. I'm joined by Katie Wilts Johnson and Mariah Beverly, uh, also with the Center for Farm Financial Management. And CFFM, as we're, as we're known, we've been around for uh, a, a long time now, almost 40 years, uh, where we've been helping, edu or helping producers um, become better at making farm financial management decisions, marketing decisions, things like that. Um, the way that we do that is by creating software and programming. And one of the things that we actually do um, is develop AgPlan, the business planning software that Katie and Mariah are going to talk about. So instead of me just talking about all the things that we do, I'm going to actually turn it over to them. Um, and you're going to get quite the treat to hear from them about AgPlan as we go through today. So uh, Katie and Mariah, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Mariah, or thanks, Curtis. Mariah and I are actually, you know, not similar to, I see a lot of people on this attendee list or, uh, you know, everyone's chatting in where they're from. There's a lot of Texas, um, Southern. If you can't tell from my turtleneck, we are up in Minnesota, so we are not in like a warmer place, but we are actually also having a warmer winter than normal. I think last year at this point, we had a couple feet of snow. Um, and this year we've had a couple of dustings of like just light snow. It's all melted. I don't see any snow outside right now. So it's cold, but it's not snowy. Um, so yes, we are part of the Center for Farm Financial Management, which is part of the University of Minnesota. Um, essentially, we, as Curtis was saying, develop tools to really help farmers and producers. So my name is Katie. Mariah is presenting with me. And our mission here at the Center for Farm Financial Management is to improve the farm financial management and marketing abilities of ag producers. So like Curtis was saying, we essentially our goal is to help you. And we do this through creating tools and trainings around both farm management in general and farm financial management. So some of the tools that we've created, we have some planning tools in general. So Ag Plan is a specific business planning software developed for agriculture users. We also have Ag Transitions is another another tool that we've created. This tool uh, is more so, you know, Ag Plan is for planning a business. Ag Transitions is for planning a transition plan. Uh, maybe you have a business that's going from one generation to the next generation. Ag Transitions is a good tool essentially to kind of look at some of those transitional questions. And then we have Fair Rent, which is a rental agreement resource. Um, we also have financial tools, right? We both, Mariah and I and Curtis, all three of us are economists. So um, we really like to talk about finances. I know that not everyone does, um, especially a lot of the farmers we work with. They would much rather be out doing their farm thing than talking about financial things. And so we've created some of these financial tools to make some of that work seem a little bit less daunting or a little bit more exciting. I don't know. So um, Finbin is an online database that you can go into and query different, you know, 
uh, costs and returns of a soybean operation, or you can look at costs and returns of milking cows or whatever that might be. You can query that in FinBin. We have FinPack, which is a financial uh, software package to really look at where, what your finances are. So you can create a balance sheet or um, a cash flow statement, or whatever you might want to do within FinPack. And then the one that I really want to highlight is that bottom one, developing and interpreting your financial statements. This is an online course. I believe there's like, th I think it's three hours of total content in that course. Um, and essentially, this is to help you create your own financial statements. So if you need to create a balance sheet or uh, an income statement, um, you can watch this course and it will basically help you walk through how to do that and then also help you look at what the numbers within those statements mean. Um, I think Diego is going to share that, but what stood out to me as Abby was talking about one of the requirements you need was showing that you have the knowledge or the ability to operate your farm business I think that that could be a helpful resource to, you know, complete that course. And maybe you could include that in your application as something helping you or building your knowledge base. Some other tools that we have, just some informational tools. Farm Answers is a really helpful one that is developed specifically for beginning farmers and ranchers. Essentially, they can go and search for certain articles or resources to help get started in their farming endeavors. And then lastly, we have some grain marketing resources if you're into a grain marketing operation. So that's kind of an overview of FIN, of, of CFFM. I will say the only tool on that list, and if you want to go back, Mariah, one slide, uh, the only tool on this list that is not free that you have to pay for is FinPack. Everything else here is free, and it's available at our website. So our website is cffm.umn.edu. And if you just go to this tools tab up here, you'll be able to see all of those tools. So a little bit of background info, backstory to help set the stage of essentially we are here to help create tools to make your life easier. Um, we are going to dive into ag plan because business planning is really our focus for today. But I just wanted to give you some of those tools as information. Thanks, Katie. I think that was a really great overview. Um, before we show off the Ag Plan tool, I think it's really good to remind ourselves why in the world do we need to develop a business plan? How do I go about doing that? And so I'm going to give you a little bit of a higher level overview of that. <clears throat> So what is a business plan? Well, formal definition would be a formal statement of business goals, the reasons why they are believed attainable, and then your plan for reaching those goals. So you can kind of think of it as like a roadmap. Where do you want your business to go? How are you going to get it there? And then whether you think that plan is feasible, why you think it's feasible. Um, so real quickly, you can put it in the chat. How many of you all have created a business plan? Or you can, if you're brave enough, you can put, you can shout it out um, verbally. And then what are some of the strategies maybe that you use to create your business plan? So I'm seeing some yeses, some chat GPT, yep. In progress, yep. Avoided it, yep. <laughs> Work in progress. Yeah. So I see a lot of people have. Some people have it, and that's okay. Um, if we are going to help you with that if you've never done it. And if you do have one, then we have a tool that maybe you can use um, to help develop that more. Um, so, well, who needs a business plan? And it's not necessarily, not every business necessarily needs a plan, but any business business will benefit from a plan. And especially um, if you are a new or expanding business, or if you are thinking about making some major changes to your, cur to your current business, or if you're in uh, like a creative niche value added or alternative um, business area. Um, so why, why all this talk about a business plan? What, what's the point, right? Um, but the one big thing is it, it demonstrates that you've taken the time to ob objectively think through the details required to make your business succeed. Um, and it helps to demonstrate, um, especially to others, right? Especially where you're coming to um, some of the 
the programs offered by Former Veteran Coalition, it kind of helps prove to them too, like I've thought about this and this is why I think it, it this is going to succeed. Um, so that's important there. Um, and again, like as I was saying, it helps effectively communicate your business. Like I was saying, ex ex externally to lenders or investors or partners, it helps you to communicate your vision for your business and your plan. But and then also internally to other family members or employees that might be involved in your business as well. Um, and it also, it helps you to improve the management of your, your business. It's the blueprint for operating your business, right? So you, you wouldn't build a house without first planning it out and having those blueprints. And it's kind of the same thing for your business. It have, has that blueprint for how you're going to operate your business, and it helps, you to, helps to serve as an operational guide um, for your business. And then, so what do you all think? I saw some people in the chat that said, um, no, I haven't developed a business plan. I've been avoiding it. What are some of those things? What may be holding you back from developing a business plan? If anybody wants to chime in, maybe it's time consuming. Zero idea how. It can be overwhelming. Yep, all of those are very true. <clears throat> Is it good enough to move forward? Fear, yeah. Take a lot of work, a lot of time not sure where to start. So all of those are very valid reasons as to why you haven't started a business plan, but I think um, Ag Plan will really help you with some of those. Um, have it in my head, but why should I write it down? We just covered that um, because you want to communicate it externally to, uh, to other lenders or people that you want to partner with, right? Um, so all of those are very, very valid reasons as to why you haven't done a business plan, and I think Ag Plan can really help with some of that. Um, so at CFFM, you know, like I was saying, we've helped develop business plans for a number of years and we've learned a few things um, and you all hit on some of those too. Um, it is very time consuming. It's not something that you can just sit down and in 30 minutes have something ready to go. It takes time to think through all those things. Um, and the other thing that it can be very expensive, meaning that you can pay somebody else to do your business plan, sure, but that is not cheap, right? Um, it can be thousands of dollars to have somebody help you or write your business plan for you. Um, and the other thing is we really don't recommend that you pay somebody else to do it for you. It's best if you do it. If you're the owner, you're the manager, you sit down and you think through your business plan because it helps you think through all of those aspects of your business and get get a handle of what's going on on what your vision is for your business. Um, and we also think that your business plan should be a living document, meaning that it's not a one and done thing. You don't write it and then stick it in a drawer and forget about it. Um, it should be something that you revisit and revise frequently. Now, what that means for you, it could vary, um, but we recommend at least annually. You go through and review it. Maybe nothing changes and that's fine, but at least you reviewed it, right? Or maybe some operational things have changed and you've got different um, different things going on in your business that you you think, maybe I should update that in my business plan. And that that is why we um, call it a living document and that you should review it and revise it at least annually. Um, so major functions of management, um, there's a lot of different aspects, a lot of moving pieces of running a business, right? So you uh, have to manage your production and your operations. Um, you have to m market your services, market your products. Um, you have to manage personnel. If you have people working for you in your business, um, that's another piece that you have to manage. And then there's also the financial piece as well. So on the chat, some people were mentioning some of the finances as well. So you, you're well, wearing all of these hats as a manager of your business. And that means um, your business plan is going to have to cover all of these things, right? Um, so the sections of a business plan, right, because we have all of these aspects that you're supposed to be doing as a manager means that you're going to need a business plan that addresses all of those aspects. And so an ag plan, we've broken this down to um, we have an executive summary, a business description, an operations plan, a marketing plan, management and organization plan, and a financial plan. And I know that's a really long list and it can seem daunting, but ag plan is there to help, right? Um, so next piece I saw, some people saw, said they don't know how to develop a business plan. And there, a lot of people who develop business plans are using software. And the software provides outlands, 
outlines, suggestions on the content, and some sample plans. And that is exactly what Ag Plan provides to you. We give you those outlines, suggestions on how to put, what to put in your business plan, and some of those sample plans. Um, so kind of pivoting and talking about Ag Plan specifically, we have a lot of different plan types in Ag Plan depending on the type of operation that you're running. Um, and so you can see those on the screen. Um, quickly, I'm going to hit on some of those last ones. We have organic transition. If you're thinking about going into organic or want to transition to organic, there's a plan for that. There's a small business plan that's geared towards non-agricultural audiences. Um, and then we also have a personal plan, which would be like a career planner, for example, um, and then a short-term operator plan. So if for some reason the main operator of the business, for whatever reason, can't be there to operate the business, how would what's the plan for somebody else to step in and run that business? So for example, if you have somebody who maybe has bad health for a little bit, or um, if there's somebody who is being deployed, for example, and that short-term operator plan can help run the business while the operator is unable to um, be there to make those decisions. So the main plans that we're gonna talk about and hit on today are those commodity value added and ag tourism pieces. So the commodity plan is uh, for businesses that focus on commodities. So corn, soybeans, cattle, wheat, um, dairy operations, we would recommend the ag commodity plan. So this is for um, sort of traditional farms and ranches that market their products through like a bulk traditional commodity sales. This would be the plan for you. Um, the other template that we have is the value added uh, template. So if your business specializes on selling agricultural products directly to consumers, or whether that's through a CSA or a farmer's market or a roadside stand or some other type of niche marketing, we would recommend um, this value added plan. And then lastly, we uh, have that agritourism template. So this business plan is designed for farms and ranches who focus on at least one agritourism activity. So if it's, again, the primary focus is agritourism, then this would be the plan that you would use. And so an example might include entertainment or events, like uh, maybe a festival or corn maze, or if you're doing like education, like tours or school field trips, things like that, this would be the plan that you would use. Um, so that's a quick overview of Ag Plan. I'm going to switch my screen now, and um, Katie is going to talk through how to build a plan within Ag Plan and talk about those pieces on how to use the tool. Yes, while you're pulling up Ag Plan, Mariah, I do see a question. Can you use multiple plan types? You can, you can absolutely have multiple plans in Ag Plan. I will go over that in a minute, so bear with us, but the short answer, yes. So here we are at Ag Plan. The um, URL, I don't know if you saw on the previous slide, also, you know, you can see it up here, agplan.umn for University of Minnesota.edu. Um, this is essentially the like main login page. If you already have an account, you can just type in your email and password and click on the green sign in button. If you do not have an account, however, you would click on that blue register today button and all you'll need uh, is your is an email and a password really to set up your account. So it's pretty quick, pretty easy. This tool is free. I will reiterate that. So you don't need to pay for it. Um, it. All you need is that email and password to create your account. So Mariah has her email and password typed in. We're going to go ahead and click on sign in. And this will bring us to like the main screen in Ag Plan. Now there's two gray bars going across the screen that are like the main sections, I would say. So the first one on the top says my plans. And that is where we're going to see any plans that we have created. So here I have created this plan that's called business plan. That's uh, You can see that there in the my plan section. That's my business plan that I've created. Down below that, you see the gray bar that says plans for review. So an aspect of ag plan that is pretty popular is if you have anyone like an educator you're working with or a mentor or someone on the farm who is a management partner, 
you can share your plan with someone else and they would be what, what we call a reviewer. And so um, if someone had shared a plan with me that I'm reviewing, um, like I'm a reviewer on their plan, it would be available here in this plans for review section. So to get started, let's say we want to create a plan. I'm gonna click on the green start a new plan button. And this is where I can select what type of template I want to use. So there is a little like sentence explaining each of the template types in case you know you forget one or you have questions about which one you should be using. Um, to, for today's purposes, we're gonna click on a value added plan. Again, this is a good type of plan if you have, um, if you're selling direct to a consumer, maybe you're a fruit and veggie producer, uh, doing anything of that sort, this is the plan that I would recommend. So we're going to name our plan first off. I'm just going to call it, yeah, my business plan. And then you can also choose what type of font you want throughout your business plan, et cetera, here. And then once you're ready to go, click on the green create plan button. So now you can see, you know, what, what was visible before was just the business plan down there. And now the one we just created called my business plan is now viewable. What we're going to do if we want to edit this plan is go all the way over to the right hand side and click on that blue view plan button. And this is really going to take us into like the main data entry editing of this business plan. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have those sections of the business plan that Mariah talked about in the PowerPoint. So essentially, you know, we have our executive summary and the business description. And then we get into those core pieces of management. So operations, marketing, personnel, and then financial. So all of these sections have subsections as well. So you can click into any of them and see different headings that go along with that main heading. So for example, you know, in marketing, we have marketing trends, customers, target market, pricing, promotion, all of these things. Um, and, and these, you'll see subsections similar to this for each of the main sections. And what I'll say is that basically in Ag Plan, we try to think through everything that someone might possibly want. And every business is different, right? So business A might need these five things. Business B might need a different set of items to include in their business plan and etc. So we have tried to think of everything in ag plan that you'd like all of these sections that someone might need. So don't get overwhelmed when you see all of these sections because your business probably doesn't need all of them. Are there some that you should include in your business plan? Absolutely. But it's okay to leave some of these sections blank. So First off, if I want to edit this business plan, what I'm gonna do is go to the center of the screen here. If I click, you can start to edit here. This is essentially where you're gonna write your business plan. So what we can do here is basically any functions of a word processing document are included here. So we can copy, we can paste, we can do a bold, or italics, or we can add in bullet points if we want to do that. Um, we can also add a table. If you want to include a table for maybe your, yeah, for your pricing, you have different prices for different products. You can certainly add a table there as well. Like I said, you can copy paste. So if you have something already kind of written up in a Word document, you can definitely copy, you know, the table, for instance, from that document into here. So, if you're anything like me, it's really hard to start your business plan. And I think we saw that a lot in the comments too. It's overwhelming. You don't know where to start. Who knows if you have good ideas. And so toward the bottom of the page, we see um, these different tabs that are supposed to be helpful basically because it is overwhelming to start. And so we wanted to give you guys a resource or um, some guiding lines, some guidelines to help you get started. So the first tab that we see is called tips. Tips are essentially things that you should or could think about for this section. It's There's a lot of questions. So like if we read just a little bit of these tips, it says, you know, list the prices that you charge or why do you charge these prices? Um, you know, there's certain questions in there. You don't have to answer all of the questions or you don't have to even acknowledge all of these points that we're making in the tips. But 
It's just there to help you think through and kind of get started with some of this. Maybe, you know, you don't have a business yet. You haven't started, but you want to. So maybe you don't have pricing figured out, but these questions are here again to help spur thoughts of, okay, what pricing do I want to do? What do I want to charge for certain products? Why do I want to charge that? Why do I think people will pay that amount? You know, really, like I said, spurring some ideas as you're getting going or as you're writing this plan. The next tab over is called resources. So this is a tab basically to help you further investigate some of these things. If you need more resources, more help on a certain topic, go to this resources tab. And these are some of the resources that we have kind of deemed as helpful that we wanted to include in Ag Plan as you're going through this process. Next over, we have samples. So um, for each of our business plan templates, we have a few samples included. These are sample farms that um, we wanted to include here, again, just to help spur some ideas, right? So some of these samples might have something really long written out in each section. Some samples might have a shorter thing, but really ultimately just to help you think through what you're doing in your business or what you want to be doing and how you're gonna get it done. The last tab that we have is called comments. So this is, if you remember, I was talking about how you can share your plan with a reviewer. This is where they would leave comments. So what I could do is, you know, if I or if Mariah was a reviewer on my plan, she could come in here and say, hey, this looks good, Katie, but you might want to consider adding some commentary about, you know, X, Y, Z topic. So this is where we would see those comments would be under this comments tab. So let's go take a step back and look at how to add a reviewer into our plan. So first off, we're gonna go back to our main Ag Plan page. So you can do that by either clicking on this Ag Plan logo over here on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side, you can click on the red X and that will bring us back to the main screen of Ag Plan. What we're gonna do is rather than clicking on the view plan button on the right-hand side of the screen, we're gonna to go to the center of the page and there's a link where it says reviewers. So if I click on that link, this is where I can add someone as a reviewer into my plan. And so if we just type in uh, my email address right there, kwj at umn.edu, and then I can decide what kind of access do I wanna give this reviewer? You know, is it someone who, um, you know, I'm working with an educator, I just want their feedback. I'll probably just give them comment only access, but maybe I want to share it with my spouse or um, co-farm owner. For someone like that, maybe I want them to be able to comment and to edit the plan. You can choose and then go ahead and click on that green add reviewer button. So once we've added this person as a reviewer, they will get an email saying, hey, someone has added you to their plan in Ag Plan. Also, you can see now Katie is an, a reviewer on this plan. And you can, with the blue checkbox there, you can see that I have access or Katie has access to edit this plan. Whenever I want to, at whatever time, I can go ahead and uncheck that box. And that now takes away edit access, but it leaves Katie as a reviewer on that plan. If I, I wanted to give her edit access back, I would just click on that blue box again. The other thing is at whatever time I want, if for some reason there's someone that is no longer, you know, working with me or whatever the, you know, scenario might be, I can revoke reviewer access as well by just clicking on that red revoke access button and that will remove the reviewer from my plan. So let's go back into data entry for our plan. And so click on that blue view plan button. And what you'll see here is that we now have a fifth tab that says email reviewers. And so what this does is I can send an email to my reviewer uh, about the specific section I want them to work on or look at. So I can go ahead and type my message. And then with the checkbox up on the top, I can select which reviewers I want to send this to. So here I only have one reviewer listed, but maybe I have three or four people that I have reviewing this plan. Maybe I want to send this question to all four of my reviewers or maybe just two or one of them. I can go ahead and check which names I want to send that to. So that's kind of a helpful feature. Overall, this reviewer 
uh, setup is really helpful, especially if you are working with others. You can go ahead and say like, hey, Katie, I just finished my marketing section. The, you know, I really was struggling with the pricing section. I got everything else, but pricing was really difficult. Can you please take a look and let me know what you think? Go ahead and send that email and then they can comment back and share, you know, their thoughts with you. Um, a couple other things we can, when we're all done with our business plan or even just done with a certain section of it, we can go ahead and print our plan. So to do that on the right hand side, there is this print icon. We're going to go ahead and click on that button. And here I can choose what I want to print. So if I only want to print my business plan, I can do that. If I also want to print the comments, I can do both the plan and the comments, or I can just print the comments only. Once I've decided, so for now we're going to print just the plan. I'm going to click on the green view print plan button. And here I can decide if I want to print that plan to a Word document, or if I want to print it to a PDF document. Either way works. You just go ahead and choose whichever you want. Before we do that, I also want to point out, though, that we do have the capability to also add attachments into our plan. So, for example, maybe you have some marketing contracts that you want to include, or maybe you have a farm map, you know, that you want included with your location, whatever it might be. We can go ahead and click on this paperclip icon on the right hand side. And when you do that, this is where we can add in some of those attachments. So again, it kind of a helpful resource just to keep everything all in one place with your business plan. So um, that's kind of a brief overview of how Ag Plan works and what it does. Like I said, essentially the goal with Ag Plan is to make it user friendly for each of you. So don't be overwhelmed by it. We It's not intended, again, for you to fill out every section and to answer every single question in the tips. Um, but basically, think about your business plan, use it, however, you know, fill out Ag Plan to meet the needs of your business. With that, um, we are going to do a little activity. And so I want you to think about your business. If you have one, think about the one you have. Or if you are trying to start a business, think about that business. And essentially, think about these questions. So if you have a sheet of paper, great. If you don't have a sheet of paper, maybe a note card, or you can just think about it in your head. Um, what do you produce and what services do you provide? Just jot down a couple. And then also think about once you've thought about what you're producing, what you're providing, who is your primary market for those things? Another good question to ponder, do you have employees? Do you need employees? Do you need volunteers? Uh, anyone other than yourself to operate your farm? Another question, what makes your business competitive? What makes your business better than others? Why should people buy from you? Or what makes your business succeed? Why will you be successful? And then the last question I have is, what does the future hold for your business, right? What's your goal for even a year from now? Where would you like to see your business at? So even if you probably didn't have time to fully answer all of these questions sitting right here, um, even if you just, you know, write down some of these questions or think about them, this is kind of the core start to your business plan, right? So a lot of this stuff will actually end up going in your business description, which is the first part of the business plan that we recommend writing. So the business description is essentially looking at where is your business located? Um, what facilities do you have? What facilities do you need? Do you need a building? Do you need certain equipment? Stuff like that. Uh, also looking at the history of your business. Does it have a history? I'm, are, were you taking over your farm from anywhere else? Um, or is, are you starting brand new? 
And then lastly, talking about your ownership structure. So are you the main, the only owner? Are you buying into the business with other people? Uh, it's stuff like that. So this is really the business description is what we recommend as being the first section of the business plan that you write. Oftentimes the business description is what we know the most about, right? Like I already know where my farm is located. I know who is operating in the, or who is, you know, managing the farm, et cetera, versus some of these other questions like your marketing plan, your pricing, et cetera, you maybe don't have as clear of an idea about. And so that, you know, those are places where you might get stopped or held up. But if you start in the business description, it's a good confidence booster. It's a good way to get your feet wet in business planning and just overall getting used to writing down some of these things rather than keeping them in your heads. So some items in the business description, we'll just go into a little bit of detail here for the last couple minutes. The first one is location. So where is your farm located? Do you have multiple farms or multiple locations? And then also you should indicate if there are certain parcels or acres that you have or if there's any special situation. So for example, if you have tribal trust land or anything of that sort. Those are helpful things to include. Again, you don't have to include all of these things in your business plan, but it's you know good items to consider including. Also a map is really helpful. And what are the advantages of your location? What are the disadvantages? Especially if you're looking at a business where customers come to your location. So if it's an agritourism, entity or if you're doing any value added businesses where you're selling direct to customers and they're coming to your farm are you easy to locate are you hard to locate um do you have a nice clean setup so it looks good for customers what are your advantages and disadvantages of that location next up we have facilities so basically what are your facilities and equipment do you have a large setup? Do you need, you know, lots of machinery, large buildings, et cetera? Um, or are you a smaller setup? Do you just need a tractor to operate? Uh, what quality of are your facilities and equipment? Do you have brand new stuff? Are you having to buy it all right out way? Um, are you able to inherit some of it or, you know, work with others to really get some of your facilities and equipment in working condition? And then we have business history. So how did your business start? Are you starting a business or are you coming from, you know, a couple years of operating business? How long have you owned or managed your business? And then describe how the business has changed. If it's, if it's already been an established business, how has it grown? You know, how have your sales changed? Have you added in new products or maybe taken certain products out? Maybe you added in, certain services that you didn't have when you first started, or maybe you're looking at, um, you know, adding or subtracting some things. And then, you know, if, if you are just starting your business, maybe the business history of like what has changed over time isn't as prevalent of a topic, but maybe why are you starting um, some of those topics you know, highlighting the challenges that you've faced in, faced in the past five years, but also maybe here you could also talk about some of the challenges that you're concerned about facing. Um, let's skip over this one just for time purposes. The next part of the business description is really the ownership structure. So Again, what is that legal ownership structure? If you're just owning your business by yourself, um, go ahead and describe that, but maybe you're forming some sort of corporation, an LLC or something of that sort. Why are you choosing that? Do you have certain liabilities that you're facing that you're hoping to uh, minimize through starting that corporation? Or you know, maybe you're forming a partnership with someone else. It, it's a lot to start a new business. So working together is helpful. Go into some of that detail here. Um, you know, it's, I'm glad that Bruce had sent in that question. I already have my plan in my head. Why do I need to write it down? And I think that's actually a comment we get a lot when we talk about business planning. Um, 
you know, it's up here. Why do I need to write it down? I saw a stat on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. It was from March of 23, but I just saw it. And it said that people who write down their goals are 42% more likely to achieve them. So goals are not quite business planning, but it's a similar idea. So why are those people more successful? Well, A, it's a form of accountability, right? If I have it written down, that writing is holding me accountable, especially if I'm sharing that with someone else in my farm or in my structure um, and, and being held accountable for some of these goals or the things that I say that I'm going to do. It also helps with clarity, right? If I'm writing down these thoughts that I have, I'm thinking through, oh, wait, how is that actually going to work? Um, versus sometimes if it's just in our head, we kind of skim over some of those details. But when we're writing them down, we really have to focus on, on the full picture of how our business is going to work. Um, also, writing it down helps you remember your plan, right? So if I write it down, I can look back in six months or in a year and say, oh yeah, I was gonna do that too. I forgot that would be a really good entity to add into my business. Um, so really, I highly encourage writing this stuff down. It's very, very helpful. And I mean, obviously it's a big part of your Farmer Veteran Coalition program, your fellowship fund application, you need the business plan, but essentially it's to help you as business owners really succeed and be successful. With that, I think, Diego, if you guys are ready for questions, that's all that Mariah and Curtis and I have as well. We're happy to take a couple questions. Yes, thank you for that, Katie. Um, there was two questions that showed up that that would be interesting to bring up. So one is, so they have a type of operation that might require, it might draw from two or more of the different types of business plans that you had on that plan. Should we focus on just one type of plan first or is there a way to create kind of a hybrid plan? How should we go about that? Yeah, so there's two different options. You can do two separate plans if you want. That gets to be a lot of business planning though. So what we tend to recommend is you do one business plan and incorporate both items into the business plan if you can. So for example, my family has a dairy farm. I would probably, you know, focus on the dairy farm. And then if we wanted to add in like an ice cream operation into our dairy farm, I would try to merge the two into one business plan where I'm talking about both the dairy cows and the ice cream. Uh, but if you think it's easier to do two separate plans, you're welcome to do that too. As we said, you can have as many, you can have more than one business plan. You can actually have as many business plans as you want within ag plan. It just gets to be a lot for you to manage up here so do what i think works best for you okay and then another question was um when you're talking about including employees on your business plan do family members count as employees so they would go in the personnel section of ag plan so down in the management and organization and yeah i think that's a great part to include in your business plan is signifying who is a family member, right? Just in general, who's operating this farm and making it work? And if it's family members, it's family members. Um, I think you can write that in your plan too. Are are these family members getting paid? Are they volunteering their time? Maybe they're getting some sort of like management um, salary or whatever it might be. I think absolutely include family members if that's your workforce. Okay. And then another one that showed up was, does that plan help with nonprofits? Yeah, anyone can go into Ag Plan. Um, as Mariah said, we have multiple different templates. So if your nonprofit is doing an ag-based thing and wants to set up a commodity or value-added template, absolutely. If it's just a nonprofit business that's not doing agricultural related stuff, we have a small business template that they can use. Um, yeah, anyone can create an Ag Plan account. All right. Let's see what else do we have. I do see a comment about, um, I think it's referring to the family members. If you have them on payroll, you don't need to, you can include, you know, volunteers as a section in ag plan as well. So if you don't have them on payroll, that's fine. Okay. And another one I see is a good question. Does that kind of give you suggestions on how many words per section, for example, cover page, you have summary, stuff like that? No suggestions on word counts in each section. Basically, um, and we actually say this a lot, 
less is more sometimes. So don't worry about writing pages and pages in your business plan. Write what's sufficient, right? If you need three sentences, you need three sentences. If you need 12 sentences, write 12. Okay. And to add on to that, um, with a 15 page limit for your application, only use what's necessary. Uh, for you do not have to use each and every section. In fact, we say almost no one uses each and every section. So, um, like Katie said, bre brevity is, is good, uh, in this, but just make sure you fully explain what you're trying to do, but brevity is good. All right. Thank you for that. And then this is a question aimed towards Abby. So how should FSC members highlight their military careers while engaging other opportunities on the business plan? So there's actually also going to be a um, question about it as well in the application. So if you can't fit it somewhere into your business plan, you can always just put it into an answer um, on the application. There'll be short um, responses so you can type in. Um, I don't think there's a word limit. Or if there is, it's a long one. So you should have plenty of room to talk about that as well as on the short essay. You can also talk about it as well. Right. Um, I think that's all we have. Let's see. And then, Abby, do I need to be a combat veteran to be considered for the grant? No, as long as you're a um, military veteran and you had an honorable characterization of service. And then if you didn't, we may still consider you. Just clarify a little bit more. All right. I think that's about all the time we have for questions and for the whole presentation. Curtis, Katie, and Mariah, thank you so much for all the information you shared. It was like, is there anything else you'd like to share before we end it off? I would just say in the chat, I left Katie and my email address. So if there's something that we didn't get a chance to answer, or if there's something that comes up as you're using Ag Plan and you have questions about, please feel free to email us um, and we'll be happy to help guide you and direct you with any kind of questions you have. All right, thank you for that. Abby, any, any last words? I don't think so. I'm trying to answer a few of these other questions real quick um, about links and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I think that's it. Thanks everyone for coming on. I think this was probably one of our biggest webinars we've done in a while. So we really appreciate it and we really hope we could have helped you a little bit. So um, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Yeah, and then off on that, this will be, again, being recorded, so be available on our YouTube channel by the end of the week for each of you on your own time to review it, share it with anyone else they think would be interested. Um, also, we'll be doing more webinars and uh, podcasts as well, going over the Fellowship Fund for the month of January and February as well. Um, be sure you sign up for our newsletter because there will be more updates on that. So if you're not signed up, you can go to our Facebook page and sign up on our um, profile page on there. That's the easy way to sign up. But um, other than that, thank you for joining. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Curtis, Katie, and Mariah for all the information. And um, happy holidays to everyone. Thank you.